Hi, welcome to the second edition of the Beaverbrook Art Gallery Virtual Art Tours, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here. My name is John LaRue. I'm the manager of collections and exhibitions at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery. And we have a fascinating story today of, of art and uh, naval mishaps, and actually quite terrifying uh, subject matter, if you can imagine it, but a fascinating painting. And it was by an artist named George Chambers, and he was a very well-known maritime uh, painter of maritime subjects. And that doesn't mean a painter from the maritime provinces. No, he was British, but he painted scenes of ships and of ocean going vessels, seascapes, that kind of thing, which was a really popular uh, art mode back in the early 19th century. And he was considered one of the finest in the UK. And the painting is, and this will be a good lesson in, in that Victorians were not always succinct in their descriptions of things. It's an 1838 painting, and here's the title. The crew of HMS Terror saving the boats and provisions on the night of 15th of March, 1837. Whew, there's a mouthful. Uh, but the funny thing is the title tells you exactly what's happening in this, in this depiction. You can see a large three-masted ship frozen in the Arctic ice, uh, extremely overcast gray day. You get cold just looking at it. Look at this, the foreboding, absolutely dangerous, precarious ice in the foreground, you know, sharp as knives. And it is the ship that was frozen in the ice, which is the reality. It was frozen for months when it was doing exploratory work off of Hudson Bay in 1837. And in fact, it was so dangerous uh, and the ship was so beaten by the ice that uh, the captain never thought they would actually return back to Ireland from his own diary. They have that. It said he recalled, and I quote this, when the strained and twisted state of the ship's frame was considered, there was not one on board who did not express astonishment that we had ever floated across the Atlantic, end the quote. So they never thought they'd make it home safe. So you can see in this depiction, a lot of grays. It just, you just feel the icy cold frigid temperature. Uh, there's a large tent made on the deck of the ship, which they actually made from uh, the sails of the ship, just to preserve heat and give them shelter. Um, and uh, just it's terrifying. Now Chambers was not there, but he, he depicted, uh, he based his depiction on someone who was there in the sketches. There was a, a lieutenant who was an incredible draftsman and artist who was uh, on, on board during that mission in 1837, and his name was Lieutenant William Smythe. And he actually did some original watercolors in situ while it was there frozen in, in the Arctic and tundra. Um, and we have those at the Beerbrook Art Gallery. So there's some examples of those which are fascinating as well. So Chambers uh, saw those and from the diaries he was able to capture probably a, a pretty accurate scene, uh, although he exaggerated certainly the ice a little bit. Now what makes this interesting is the terror, the terror of the terror didn't end right there. Uh, but 10 years later, it went on a more famous mission. You all have probably heard of the Franklin Expedition, which was uh, just the cursed mission to try to find uh, the Northwest Passage in 1845, 1846, and where all the men were lost. Well, that mission, one of the ships on that was the HMS Terror. There were two ships, the Terror, which is the ship, and the Erebus. And they were both lost in uh, north off of Baffin Island in 1846, last seen between Greenland and Baffin Island then. And the, uh, the, the men, uh, like I said, were all lost, but it resulted in the largest manhunt in British history up to that time. And they never found them, never found the ship, never found the men, although they found evidence of a few burials in certain areas, but they never found the ship. And... A few years ago only, they actually found these ships, the Terra and the Erebus, in frigid waters um, uh, off of, in Baffin Bay. And it, they found this based on oral tales and history of the Inuit up north. So actually listening to oral history, there was all these stories of these, these British ships from 100 and, you know, 170 years before. So they, they found these in, in actually pretty perfect condition, pristine condition in some ways because uh, of the, the temperature of the water. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so you had the famous Franklin expedition of these ships. And what makes it even more interesting as well, there's another aspect of this, of the terror, uh, which makes it even crazier. And certainly for Americans who may be watching this, the terror had an intimate part to play in this song, one of the most famous songs going. Ready? <laughs> Gave 
Woo, sing it, sister. That was Lady Gaga in the 2016 Super Bowl singing. Yep, you got it. The Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem of the United States of America. What does that have to do with this painting, you may ask? Well, the HMS Terror was built as a military vessel for the War of 1812. It was built in 1813, and the type of ship was called a bomb vessel. And the reason they're called bomb vessels is their hull was so thick, thick wood, it could absorb a lot of bombs and cannon fire. It was a military ship. And one of its first missions was the bombing of Fort McHenry uh, in Baltimore, uh, you know, an important American fort during the War of 1812. Of course, the British were fighting the Americans then. And the bombing of Fort McHenry is what prompted the Star Spangled Banner to be written, because at the end of that battle, which the terror was one of the ones shooting cannons on the fort, the next morning when the huge American flag was still flying, Francis Scott Key, who was there, wrote the Star Spangled Banner in honor of the flag still flying after that battle. So crazy stuff. So you've got this painting connected with Arctic exploration, uh, British <laughs> international imperialism, uh, American Star Spangled Banner, National Anthems, geopolitical intrigue, um, uh, all kinds of important historical pieces as well in this. It's also just an absolute masterwork that when I look at it, you can tell the kids it always reminds me of the Fortress of Solitude. I wonder if the directors of the first Superman movie with Christopher Reeve uh, were inspired by, by paintings such as this. But it depicts an absolute, absolutely trying time in human endeavor, but the, the artistry and, and uh, just... Just the riveting technique of this really captured it extremely well. It's a masterwork. We hope you can see it. Uh, so when we when we reopen, but enjoy this time. I'm going to share more of these with you at the Beaver Art Gallery. And so thanks again, and stay tuned for the next one in a few days. Okay, bye bye.